So here we are in uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia at the 50th anniversary of the ATHS uh, National Convention. And I'm standing here with Mr. Jeff Miller. Uh, how are you, sir? Great, great. Glad to be here. Yes, thank, uh, thank you for taking a moment to talk to me about the, the truck that we're standing in front of. I took some time to, to drive around the, uh, the fairgrounds here. There's nothing but some great looking trucks yeah, here. Absolutely. Yours happened to catch my eye. And I was in a position that favored, you know, an interview and things like that. And you happened to be here, so that worked out. Timing is everything. Yeah. So let's get right to it. Uh, tell us about the truck, you know, starting from the year and uh, and roll into how you acquired it and, and what you've done with it. It's a 1958 Peterbilt 351. I bought it out of California. It was built in Oakland, California. It was uh, originally sold to a company in Oakland, California to haul heavy equipment. Um, it stayed there for many, many years, and then it come into a water truck, a dump truck, and here it is now. Um, it came with a 220 Cummins. It's got a 335 small cam Cummins in it now. Five and a four transmission, still original. That sounds like the short list of the, the history of this truck. How did you come by it to, to acquire it? I was on eBay shopping. <laughs> eBay. <laughs> the, the curse of death there, <laughs> uh, and saw it and talked to the guy, and ended up buying it. I'm still in touch with him yet today. He gets all excited when he sees pictures of it. He's a big fan and uh, so it, uh, he's got old cars so it works out good. Awesome. So for all the prospective buyers, so when you went on eBay, what did you put in to, to find something like this? Uh, needle nose Peterbilt or 351 Peterbilt or 281 Peterbilt, uh, skinny hood Kenworth. I wasn't particular. All right. All right. All right. Well, uh, so now let's uh, Let's talk about what the truck looked like and, and your idea or how it came to be what it is now. Well, the first thing that attracted me to it was this narrow hood. The hood's very skinny, fenders are very big, and that's the look I wanted. So that's what I went looking for. And the guy that was selling it had a picture straight on the front, and that's what sold me. And uh, that's what got me hooked because I like the fat fender, skinny hood look. Okay. And your, your thoughts to, to bring it to, to what we're looking at now, how did that uh, end uh, up? I didn't have no big master plan. Like I didn't start with a blueprint where when I'm done, it's gonna look just like this. In fact, it was gonna be just a day cab. Um, and it just kind of kept morphing in. And the length of it just happened to whatever my cutoff was. It wasn't predetermined. It's just kind of been a, a work in progress. The sleeper, the truck was almost done as a day cab. And I saw the sleeper and I thought, that'll be cool. So we'll back it up and put a sleeper on it. All right, right on. So whose sleeper is that since we're talking about it? It's made to look like a Mercury, but the purists know it's not. It's a Bentz uh, off of a early 80s International, reskinned uh, from the guys down at Wilkins in Oklahoma and made to look like a Mercury. Wow, looks great. Thank you. And uh, let's talk about the color. Uh, why choose this color? Well, the color was very unpopular with everybody. When I told them what I was going to paint it, they were they did everything they could to talk me out of it. And I said, well, I don't want red. There's plenty of red ones. There's plenty of black ones. We got to stand out. So this is called celery stalk. PPG celery stalk is called in dark green metallic. And everybody that's seen it since has loved it. But beforehand, no fans. <laughs> Great. Uh, take a look at all the pinstriping. The pinstriping is just immaculate it's, it's wonderful so tell us about uh, your choice in pinstriper or, or, or things yeah, like that there's a guy in town uh, Aero Graphics is the name of his company he's uh, well everybody's a kid anymore but he's probably 40 ish and that's all he does is pinstriping and I I love pinstriping so if I could pinstripe everything I owned would have pinstriping on it but he came over and I told him do what you think is best because if I'm here it's gonna be a clown car so this is the end result. It took him all day, 12 hours, three days to do this. Wow, it and looks great. He did an awesome job, I'm tickled to death. Very nice. So let's move into the interior. Uh, what, what did the interior have in it before you got a hold of it? And tell us about what you've done to it. It had a lot of bees nest and rats nest and stuff in it when I bought it. Just had a level ride seat, no air, and a solid mount passenger seat. Um, the rest of the interior was there. I mean, all the hard parts were there. And uh, I cut down, I got a brand new Peterbilt, and I took the seats out of that and chopped the back off of them and made them short and re-upholstered those. I had a guy out in uh, Geneva, Clay Street Customs, do the interiors, never done a truck before. 
and it come out awesome. I looked at the headliner, you mm -hmm. know, if you want to call it that. I like the way that it tapers down. That hasn't really caught my attention before, or maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Was that something that you guys tried to do uh, different with this particular no, situation? No, it's just whatever he did to make it fit. I told him I wanted a console overhead, and that's just how it ended up to yeah. accommodate everything. Yeah, it gives it a nice smooth smooth look. Right, it's easy right. on the eyes up there. And then the back panel, we had it, the sunburst to match the doors on the sleeper. Mm -hmm bring some of that in. What do you do with the truck? It sounds like an odd question, but that's usually what guys want to know. Hey, the, the, what's the truck do? Does it sit? Does it work? Does it whatever? So I got to ask that no, question. No, no, I get it. And and I that's one of my pet peeves that all these guys got these show trucks and they don't do nothing with them. And this is all this, this truck does is look good. Uh, I've got other trucks, a fleet of trucks that we work every day. And I was into cars and I thought, well, why not build a truck? You don't see them a lot. And so, I hate to say it, it's just a show truck. Uh, okay. It's days of hard worker behind it. Mm -hmm. It's like me, it's getting old and it wants to retire. So, it's got a good life from here on out. Right on, that sounds, sounds pretty good. Looking up top and looking at some of those lenses on the, on the clearance lights, glass lenses. Correct. Yeah, where did you get Correct. those from? I got them, my guy, this uh, out in California. I got green ones, just got those and I put those in because that was something back in the day they would, decorate their trucks differently so you could tell who was coming at you, your buddies. and uh, But they're all glass lenses. I got green ones to put in the center just mm -hmm. to kind of bring some old school back to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks great. Thank you. Yeah, tell us about the dash because the patina on, on the instrument cluster looks like like no one's ever touched it. So tell me about well, that. Well, I wanted to keep some of the originality. It would have been easier to just go get new gauges and fit it out. But as long as they worked, I thought, Let's redo it. We just buffed up the center panel, put all the name plates back on, you know, cleaned them up the best we could. So it's not 100% restoration, but there's some old school still there. The hand valve on the dash versus on the steering column, the engine, you know, compression release, we tried to keep a lot of that there just for old time's sake. Yes. The wig rag, that was another thing I wanted to keep original, mm -hmm. and it's the functioning wig rag. There's no Low air buzzer, no low air light. All I've got is the wig wag, it just for another old school thing. Yeah. And because uh, I wanted it to be comfortable to drive, but I wanted it to be old. Now uh, let's talk about the ATHS. Um, how long have you been a part of the ATHS? Uh, probably 12 years, I guess. I've been a member for 12 years. Uh, they're great. And what I like about it is you can have a fine show truck, or you can have a working truck and they're all appreciated. I mean, I like looking at the muddy, tired ones, the rusty ones, I've got some myself. So that's the good part about it. There's a wide variety of different levels and everybody loves everybody. It's, it's not like, well, he's too good or he's too bad. It, it's, all, it's all the same. All right, so Jeff, we found our way along the, the backside of the truck and I wanted to talk about some custom parts here for a moment. So we're, we're standing next to these fenders that look really, really good. Uh, whose fenders are these? These are Hogue built fenders. Um, I wanted stainless, some shine on it, but I wanted color too. So we took a vinyl sticker and taped it off and painted the sticker to match, hoping the paint would hold up on it. And it's held up awesome. Okay, so I was thinking that that was just vinyl itself, but you painted it the It was vinyl. a black vinyl sticker, a big piece of vinyl sticker. And then we taped it off and painted it to match because we couldn't find a sticker to match exactly. Got it. And the deck plate, looks really good you know, all the way through. It's just like, how long has this truck actually been out of the shop? It's been out of the shop probably two years. Uh, a buddy of mine down in Creston, Ohio, Steve Troyer, did all the pretty look to it, painted yeah. it, hung the chrome. I mean, he does awesome stuff on old trucks. Wow, this truck has been out of the shop two years and it's yes. still looking like you just finished it. Well, it doesn't have to work, so. It <laughs> well, true. And uh, let's talk about pipes. Whose pipes do you have on? Uh, Lincoln pipes. Uh, I didn't want to get super big with the big gigantic pipes, so I wanted to just five inch. I've got my short pipes on it now because I was too tall to get here, but usually they're a little taller. So. All right. And speaking of getting it, getting it here, you drove it from Ohio. No, I hauled it today because okay. I thought it was going to get in the rain and yeah. a whole thing. Yeah, good but, choice. Uh, so we hauled it with a. We got a glider peat that we hold it out here with right that aluminum uh, fifth wheel looks really great there yeah buddy of mine uh leo zimmel out of uh, 
Hunter Peterbilt give me that. Somebody give it to him, and he says, I'll give it to you. So yeah. it's not every day you got a $3,500 sit meal. No, sir. Yeah, that, that was a pretty nice gift. Absolutely. It's been great talking to you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the future. I'll be looking. Thanks for right, the thanks. video. Bye.